We yes. have Netanyahu who is showing actually the secret atomic warehouse <laughs> and showing where it's located, which is a very big deal. And you would think that the majority of the five would, you know, go along with the U.S., except a lot of them have big issues with the sanctions. And from what I've heard is that we have Russians and Germans coming up with back channels to smuggle money from the Iran to, uh, you know, out the country so that they can, you know, um, keep moving on with their um, enrichment and everything else. What, what do you think about this? Well, that's an excellent point. And, and the question that that fact that you just mentioned, Jermaine, raises is why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they know Iran is building ballistic missiles to deliver weapons. If they know Iran is exporting terror, and if they know Iran is enriching uranium to make nuclear weapons, how could they be so freaking stupid as not to be shoulder to shoulder with the United States? And the answer as to why is simple, because they care more about business than whether or not the United States or Israel gets bombed. And what I mean by that is, if you notice, Jermaine, Iran doesn't threaten Europe or China or Russia. If nope. they threaten China, if they threaten Putin, Putin would make Iran into a parking lot and it would literally be in the Stone Age and nobody would be left alive. Why? Because he's a brutal, repressive, militaristic dictator and he doesn't care what the world thinks. And China is very similar. You don't attack China, you don't attack Europe. I'm, I'm sorry, you don't attack Russia. And Europe wants the contracts. They want oil business. They want plane business. They want uh, petrochemical business. They want to trade oil for other goods and services, right? They want to send Mercedes Benz in and they want to take the oil out. Why? Because they're all about the money and they're not getting threatened. And they figure, well, the United States and Israel will take care of it for themselves, which so far is why we are alone. The U.S., in a sense, handicaps itself dealing with this problem instead of dealing with it direct and head on. You know, we're we're playing this, you know, pitsy pat game where you're you're just, you know, cutting a little sanction off this and there. And we're, right now we're to the point where, I mean, what else can you cut off, you know, except for the well, head? I mean, what else? <laughs> you raise a really interesting point, Jermaine. Um, the most aggressive, restrictive economic sanctions in history have been placed on Iran. The Iranian internal economy is extremely close to collapse. Uh, unemployment is surging. Supplies are running short. They're literally having to import oil in certain cases because their refinement capacity is failing. The, the economy is in tremendous problems. They have skyrocketing inflation. Mm -hmm. So, so far, the sanctions are working in the sense that they're creating economic pain. But if you listen to the leadership, which is the supreme leader, uh, he's a mullah who uh, is there for life. And if they wanted to kick him out of office, uh, anyone that suggested that would end up dead instantly from the IRGC. So um, the guy does whatever he wants and he's fairly insulated. Um, Trump is promising this past week, Jermaine, even more restrictive sanctions. At some point, something's got to give. Mm. And, and let me tell you what's happened so far. Iran has started, I know this sounds hard to believe, to retaliate against the West and the United States militarily. They have blown up two, maybe three tankers in the Persian Gulf. Their proxy army, the Houthi rebels in Yemen, have fired several dozen missiles into the commercial airport in the capital of Saudi Arabia, which is Riyadh, injuring a big number of people. And they are threatening to make it much, much worse. And then they shot down an American drone worth a very large amount of money that was not armed. 
It was literally just a photographic uh, drone. And sadly, and I, and I say this as an American who disagrees with what the president has done so far, we have not done anything except send them aggressive tweets, which <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they don't care very much about. And mm -hmm. it's sort of like bouncing off at this point, you know? What we really need to do is be a little more Reagan-esque. You know, when, when Muammar Gaddafi came after the president uh, 25 years ago, the president blew up his house and killed his kid. Uh, there were no more attacks on the president of the United States, or at least none that we'd heard about. Um, it takes that kind of response, Jermaine, to this kind of leadership before you get their attention. Oh, yeah. Right? You're sort of like reasoning with a squirrel in the, in the yard. Uh, they're not very intellectual, and they're certainly uh, not going to listen to you making a speech in the yard when you're yelling at the tree where the squirrel is up at the top uh, branch laughing at you. And so far, that's what's happened. So that's why I agree with you uh, in the title of the show that we are getting incredibly close to an armed conflict. The only attacks so far have been from Iran. The military response from the United States thus far, Germain, has been zero. Mm -hmm. However, this was very surprising to me. Last week, uh, British commandos boarded a tanker that was carrying oil from Iran to Syria and seized it and won't give it back. Yep, Why? The, the because Iran oil tanker last that, month. Right. That tanker was uh, violating UN sanctions on Iran and uh, they were doing it anyway and the commandos took over the ship. Now, Iran is threatening Britain now. They're threatening to attack Great Britain and they're threatening to take their own tanker back. Um, in an armed conflict between the British and the Iranians, the Brits would crush them. They're not us, but they would. And we'll just see how desperate Iran gets in the coming weeks.